Joining us now is Ojini Kaupe with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jinex. Good morning, Dr. Good Abati. Morning. How are you this morning? I'm good. Good morning, good morning Rufa. It's good almost morning. Friday. Yeah. Can't wait. It is well. Well, all right. Good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In Uganda, President Yoweri Museveni on Wednesday asked Kenyans for forgiveness after his son, Muhozi Kainaruba, a senior military officer, tweeted about invading their country. The president's apology came a day after he fired his son as commander of the Ugandan Army Land Forces. In Nigeria, President Mohamedou Buhari on Wednesday expressed satisfaction with the military as well as other security agencies on the safe release of the remaining 23 kidnapped train passengers held in captivity for eight months by Boko Haram terrorists. Commending the troops, the president said that the nation owed the military and all other security and intelligence agencies a debt of gratitude for the successful conduct of the operation leading to the release of the hostages. In Egypt, prominent archaeologists have renewed a call for the return of the Rosetta Stone from the British Museum to the country 200 years after the deciphering of the slab unlocked the secrets of hieroglyphic script and marked the birth of Egyptology. Under sports, leaders of three football federations, Ukraine, Spain and Portugal, joined together at UEFA headquarters on Wednesday to present a campaign they hope will connect people beyond the world of sports. The president of the Ukrainian Soccer Federation, Andriy Pavelko, at the meeting noted that hosting World Cup matches in 2030 will be the dream of people who survive the horrors of war. Finally, on our entertainment, Afrobeats singer and songwriter Temilade Okpeni, popularly known as Thames, has won the best collaboration category at the 2022 BET Hip Hop Award for her contribution on American rapper Future's Wait For You, featuring Canadian star Drake. The award ceremony, which was held on October 4th, saw the 27-year-old star add another incredible feat to her award-winning and record-breaking year. While in London, Thames took home one of the biggest awards at the annual BMI London Awards. She won the Impact Prize, which spotlights and honors leading songwriters, composers, and music publishers in the United Kingdom and Europe. Well, let's begin what's trending. Thousands of women supporters of the All Progressives Congress from Southeast states on Wednesday held a rally in support of the party's presidential candidate, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and his running mate, Kashim Shatima, for the 2023 presidential election. The women converged on the Hero Square and later marched to the Imo International Conference Center, as well as the government house in Oware. Speaking when he received the women at the government house, the state's governor, Hope Uzodimma, expressed satisfaction with the performance of the party in governors, stating that he believes Tinubu will perform if elected as president and described him as a man after the women's heart. We are all working for APC. And we believe that what is happening in Lagos to happen in Nigeria. We believe that those who initiated what is happening in Lagos should also initiate what will happen in Nigeria. We believe that the good work that the president has done for the past seven and a half years has to be supported and continued. And the only way this can happen is if our women will come out in mass, if our youths will come out in mass, if our politicians will come out in mass and encourage a winning team. From beginning to the end, we are going to vote Well, in another development, Ohanez Ndigo in the All Progressives Congress Lagos State 
have also endorsed the APC flag bearer and has declared support for the re-election of the state governor, Babajile Songmolu, for the 2023 elections. The endorsement was declared at the group's town hall summit, which had in attendance critical stakeholders of the organization, including the leader of the Indigo APC in Lagos State, Joe Igbokwe, who described Bola Tinubu as a leader of repute who deserves the full support of Igbos. We are APC, and we just brought our leaders, what you see is our leaders, from the state to the local government and to the world level. And some other associations in Lagos, like the Hanese, the Igbo speaking community, the NDSS, APC is our party, and we are ready to deliver our candidate. Ndi Igbo, the people you are seeing here are leaders from all our 57 local governments, leaders of Hanese, leaders of Ndi Igbo, speaking community. This is not all we have. But we, want, we just want to showcase to the people that Ndibo, we are serious about what we are saying. People are saying that all Ndibos are obedient. We want to tell them it's not true. We don't belong to the Labour Party. We belong to the APC. And we will vote all our candidates. Well, Rufai, I guess this is what we should see during the elections, right? Yes. A mix of diverse groups a coming together diversity. to group for people, the, people have the right. candidates of their choice. Audrey, people have a right to their choice. And these people have set their choice. They're saying they're going with Tinubu. And it's good on them. Just like others have a right to their choice. But for this process to be good, we must respect the choice of each and everybody. People must not be bitten for their choices. People must not be bitten because they're carrying flags to represent whoever they choose. I keep saying electioneering should be a festival of ideas. And I'm not surprised that Joe Igbokwe and the likes and a couple of other people, Igbo people are saying they're going the way of Tinubu and his political and the APC. That's their choice and we respect them for that. But other people too should not be sidelined for picking their own choice. It should not result to violence or fisticuff. Let's run a clean campaign that is based on the issues. What are the issues in 2023? We can talk about them over and over and over again, but you can summarize all the issues in one. As we speak today, Nigeria is not working. We want a candidate that can make it work in 2023. And that's not too much to ask for. Whether that per whoever the person will be, will be most importantly incumbent on Nigerians. And that's why I keep begging that your vote has got consequences. Go out there and vote rightly. And we'll see a lot of this this political season. Let's not deceive ourselves. This is politics. All right. Yeah. Yeah, we see, we saw Igbo people march for Tinubu in Lagos State. It was quite, um, you know, different, I would say, to see them come out a mass like that in Imo State. Uh, Dr. Abati. Well, the first thing to note is that it's campaign season. Mm -hmm. Since September 28, INEC had blown the whistle for campaigns. Mm -hmm. And you are likely to see, you know, a lot more of this. This is just the beginning. Even yesterday, the PDP was in uh, Bauchi. The APC was in uh, uh, Oweri. Now, the Oweri campaign, well, you can't say it's surprising. The uh, governor of Imo State, uh, Hope Uzodema, is, is a member of the All Progressives Congress. Yeah. Right? And what he is doing with all those supporters is supporting his party, the All Progressives Congress. And he's not the only APC governor in the Southeast who has said, look, they will deliver their state uh, for the APC and for their candidate. And it's probably in the enlightened serving trice of Senator Opus Odima uh, to make that choice. Because, you know, uh, next year, he too is going to have, I think, in 2023, an off-cycle election or re-election, right. as it were. So it's in his interest, it's in his enlightened self-interest to try to support the candidate of his party so that, you know, invariably, he will be campaigning more or less also for himself. You know, so that's why I talk about enlightened self-interest. As for Lagos, yes, uh, um, the ONA is Indigo declaring for Ashwajubola met Tinubu. Well, once you saw uh, our friend, the commissioner, uh, the special advisor in charge of uh, gutter and uh, drainage. Okay, in charge of uh, drainage. <laughs> oh, okay, you know, once you saw him there, you could, you know, understand where you know that is coming from. But 
whatever it is. This is our nation, Indigo, mm -hmm. in Lagos, and there are major stakeholders yeah. in Lagos. Ibos in Lagos, they've been commissioners. There are, you know, we have had cases of Ibos representing, you know, Lagos State in the federal constituency. Okay, but people talk about the fact that look, this coming election should be all inclusive. People should should be, you know, allowed to make their own choice, whatever whatever their affiliation. But while our nation Indigo. Uh, in Lagos and the Indians in Lagos, why they say their choice is uh, the APC. There's a story also in the papers today of the Secretary General of the uh, Oanese Indigo mm. saying that uh, the candidate of the Labour Party, uh, Peter Obi, enjoys the support of 18 governors across Nigeria, north, south, and across uh, party lines. So it's a question of people making their choice. But at the end of the day, or at the end of the day, it is for the people to make a choice mm. and to be given the freedom to do so in an electoral process that must be transparent right. and that must be uh, credible. Right. But you will get a lot of this. We have seen dancing. We have seen uh, uh, bicyclists. You know, uh, we have seen very soon you will see some other, you know, very entertaining things. Yeah, we'll uh, it's see. part of the color, yeah. you know, of the uh, political process. More on the rally in Imo State. I'll read a comment here um, based about the uh, governor, Hoku yes. Zodima. It says, is the reason Ohane Zendigbo, led by Professor George Obiozo, has been silent about endorsing any other candidate because of, like you said, he's interested in his re-election. He has his own interest. <laughs> he's also invariably protecting himself. Absolutely. But it's okay. Absolutely. I've made a point. Yeah. We'll take another story. Over 142,000 members of the All Progressives Congress and other political parties who defected to the People's Democratic Party were on Wednesday received by the presidential candidate of the PDP, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, at the Abubakar Tafawa Balewa Memorial Stadium in Bauchi State. It is reported that commercial activities were temporarily paralyzed just as there was traffic gridlock in the Bauchi metropolis as a result of the unprecedented crowd that converged for the event. Event. While addressing the massive crowd at the stadium, Atiku congratulated the defectors for turning a new page in their political career. There is no better party in this country than PDP. We are the oldest, we are the strongest, and we are the natural. Therefore, I want to use this opportunity to congratulate the people of Bauchi. What can I say? It's political season. Mm -hmm. But we've always talked about, you know, some sort of um, management of crowd and all of that. I don't know how they're going to, you know, continue to paralyze, um, you know, traffic and all of that, causing these types of traffic gridlocks. I mean, I felt like it should have been more organized. I, I saw a bunch of videos circulating online. But 142,000 defectors to the PDP. What do you, what do you make of that? I mean, it's a, it's a season of people making their choice on politics. I'm not surprised. Nigeria is a big country. Mm -hmm. We've got over 200 million people. 142,000 is small compared to 200 million. And you have 18 political parties on the ballot. So if we even say 82 million voting population, and we dash all the 18 political parties, 1, 1 million people, you will have change, change on it. So we've got a lot of people in Nigeria, and they are part of the political process. But you see, my point is, we need to educate the electorate more. Because they fail to realize that the power is not in the hands of the people in power. It is actually the power being in the hands of the people. And it has to be said here. And how should the electorate vote? They should vote based on the issues. And the candidate that can change their lives. So it's not about mammoth crowd defecting to a political party or not. It's about what will be the outcome of the election, how informed the electorate can be. And that's why every day here, we talk about the issues. I'm sure anybody that's watching Arise for over a week will have known that inflation rate is over 20%. And those are the issues, and inflation makes you poorer. So it's politics season. We'll see more of this, Oji. In fact, even you will see some people will say one million people defected. We are ready. <laughs> but the most important thing is, as long as the electorate know the issues and right. they can make their choice based on knowledge, then our job in the media is done. Dr. Vati? There were two events in Bauchi yesterday by the PDP. First, that uh, event at the stadium uh, that was attended, and you could see how the 
manage the optics to show that it was well attended mm -hmm. uh, for persons talking about numbers. So, as I said earlier, it's campaign season, and you know, politicians are masters of uh, optics. The uh, second event that took place was in the uh, in a smaller space, you know, in a hall, uh, which was presided over by Senator Yochi Ayu, and you know, governors were there, you know, and they had uh, uh, that their meeting uh, and all of that. Yochi Ayu. You know, was quoted as saying that the defectors were over 300,000. Mm. But I saw 140,000 on the screen there, but he said over 300,000 uh, defectors. Well, you know, Nigerian politicians are perpetually uh, moving as the weather, you know, uh, appears to them. Yeah. Uh, so defection has become standard uh, practice. Uh, politicians going where they think that their interests will be uh, best served. Okay, you can play games with the numbers, but it's true that people are perpetually moving up and down, uh, which is why in Nigerian politics, you see some politicians, they've been to five places and they, they've not finished. If tomorrow the weather goes this way, they will jump again. Uh, but there are persons who, who are saying that should be addressed and that the relevant sections of the law governing that should be you know, uh, enforced where those apply. At the PDP event in uh, Bauchi uh, yesterday, the other thing to note is that Supporters of uh, Governor Nyesom Wiki and his allies, the party chieftains who are in his camp and the uh, governors who are on his side, they were not there. They boycotted the event. Mm. Although I saw someone that looked like um, former Governor Ibrahim Dankwambo. Mm. Uh, Dankwambo you know, has also been seen in meetings uh, with uh, Governor Wiki and others. I think he was there you know, at that event. But, also conspicuous was the absence of uh, what you may call the wiki camp. Although yesterday we pointed out that with the visit of the chairman of the uh, BOT, Senator Adolphus Wabara, uh, Governor Wiki talked about unity, he talked about reconciliation, he talked about peace, he talked about his continued membership of the party, and he talked about the fact that he, uh, he, he was misquoted uh, and that he has not endorsed you know, the presidential candidate of any other uh, political party. He just wants the crisis within the uh, PDP uh, to be resolved. So those are the details in terms of uh, what happened, uh, uh, you know, yesterday with the PDP uh, in Bauchi. Of course, we have five months, and I keep saying this. I must have uh, mentioned it uh, elsewhere that you know, for campaigns, five months is a lot. Yes. So you know, it looks like a long campaign, and a lot will go into it, considering the cost of doing it, considering you know, the enthusiasm of supporters and the logistics involved. But I believe that if anybody wants to be president or wants to be a governor or House of Assembly member, then you must be prepared. INEC, having now released you know, the form of over 10,000 people looking for positions at the uh, House of Assembly uh, level, over 900 looking for positions at the level of, uh, of uh, governorship across 18 political parties. So we're going to see a lot of this, you know, uh, going on. Uh, to you have the presidential election uh, in February and the gubernatorial and House of Assembly elections in uh, March uh, 2023. But as we keep saying, all the stakeholders involved must do their bit, yes. from INEC to the security to the political parties uh, themselves. Absolutely. We'll take another story. It has been trending. The governor of Lagos State, Babajide Sonwulu, on Tuesday surprised public servants with his announcement that a pay rise was coming. The governor said the move was to cushion the effects of inflation, high prices of commodities, and the rising cost of living being experienced across the globe. Sonwulu personally broke the news to the civil servants who gathered at the Secretariat in Alausa, the seat of government. As a country, there is high level of inflation. I know that as a country, I instructed at a cabinet meeting, I instructed the head of service office and the minister of staff to be an pension to start work on how we're going to increase the entire salary.
I'm very proud of the governor, but mm. you know, a lot of people have different ideas when it comes to you know campaign season. Um, mm. Some people say this might be it, but you know that this has been on the governor's agenda for a while. Even just you know transportation, he's talked about increasing the bus fleet, salaries for you know um, Lagos workers, and I think it's a you know a congratulatory effort at this point. I mean, me. it's good good work by the governor, and I must say uh, it's really important that we do what is right. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are going to make the strong argument that it's because of politics and all of that. Yes. But when you look at the empirical facts on ground, the governor has done what is right. Yes. Inflation is 20.2%, and I'm hearing a 25% salary increase. At least he's been able to hedge against inflation and help the workers get a breather, which is very good, and which is very important at this point in time like this. Because, you see, you don't know the effect of inflation on families until you get close to them. How their livelihood is being creamed away by the cost of commodity increasing. How the fact that what you could buy with a certain amount last year, you can't buy with that amount this year. And you cannot take away the fact that inflation palpably eats into your revenue. Because what it means is that you're using more Naira to chase dollar. Take, for instance, a flight to Abuja. A couple of years ago, 60, 70, 100,000. Now you need times two of that, 200,000, to go to Abuja. So inflation is sky high. And how do you hedge against inflation? Increase wages. Yeah. And that's what the governor has done. That's what he's and done. this is good. Over the 20% percentile that is hitting people with inflation. Mm -hmm. And we, not all, we also encourage other governors across states to, to look at their workers and see how they can increase their pay. I like that point, Rafai. Dr. Bazi, before I take your comment, because the governor has been doing so well, in a recent rally tagged Lagos Women Support Walk for Tinubu Shatima Samuolu Hamzad, organized to canvass support for the presidential candidate of All Progressives Congress, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and his running mate, as well as for the governor and his deputy, Obafemi Hamzad. Samuolu was seen dancing again to the viral hit song, Buga by popular Afrobeat singer, Kiss Daniel. Let's take a look. Uh, by far, this was my favorite. <laughs> you know, the one he did during when he was announced the winner of the governorship election. I think this was uh, this pitted hands down, Dr. Abati. Well, in every part of the world, political season is like a festival. Yes. And as I said earlier on, you know, you see a lot. You see people riding bicycle. You see people dancing. Whatever you can do mm -hmm. to market yourself, you know, and to appeal to the electorate uh, so that you can get the votes and you can win. Even if it means jumping up or, or whatever, politicians will do it. That's number one. So number two is about what uh, the governor of Lagos State has done, increasing uh, wages. Yes, in other parts of the world, people are asking for cost of living allowance yeah. because of the inflationary rate that you have everywhere. But the technical point about it is when wage indexation becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yes, Lagos State has resources, very high IGR, so it can provide for the people and say, oh, we have to help you at this time. Fine. But how about other states? Do they have similar uh, capacity? And how about, you know, larger macroeconomic issues in Nigeria? That's one. Number two, he said he will give 100 uh, vehicles to directors yes. within the state uh, uh, government. Uh, he's saying that uh, pension areas since 2021 will be paid and that you know all those areas will be cleared because he's one of them he wants to take care of them by the way the contest was that the governor was paying a working visit to the secretariat he too works there he had always uh, <laughs> since he left banking worked there so you must uh, understand when people also say there is a political undertone yes. because you know that secretariat is also his base he wants to get the civil servants uh, on his uh, side but of course he made a point about service delivery that is not just about uh, money, giving you money. Yes. It's also about serving the state Absolutely. and helping the government to pursue 
the team's agenda. Yeah. When it goes beyond the, the secretariat, I hope the governor too, you know, will also talk about that team's agenda. And he has been, I has been able to serve the people of Lagos State and why they should vote for him the second time. Very well said, Dr. Abati. Thank you very Thank much, you so much. Well, that's all I have for you guys on what's trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.